ever wondered about watt hour miles and miles per kilowatt hour efficiency consumption what they mean does it matter do you need to know dave takes it on will explain it all we're going to be dealing with range consumption and efficiency so i'd better start by defining them range is the distance your car can go on a set amount of fuel be that petrol diesel or electricity so 30 miles per gallon is a good example your car can travel 30 miles on a single gallon for an EV that could be three miles on a single kilowatt hour the higher the number the better 50 miles per gallon is much better than 30 four miles per kilowatt hour is better than three consumption is quite the opposite it's the amount of fuel you use to travel a set distance so five liters of petrol used to cover a hundred kilometers or 300 watt hours electricity used to drive one mile obviously here the lower the consumption the better three liters per hundred kilometers is better than five and a hundred watt hours per mile is better than 300. efficiency a bit more complicated does use range and consumption figures but it's much more involved like consumption the more efficient a car is the less fuel it uses and the greater the range it will be on a full tank or battery allowing you to drive further, use less fuel, save money. But efficiency is more about the design and build of the car itself, factors you have no control over, other than to take them into consideration when you choose what EV to buy. Now a specific car might be able to travel a massive 600 mile on a full battery and appear to be good and desirable, and the salesman will try to convince you that that is true. But underneath, if all they've done is installed a huge battery or fuel tank, might be extremely inefficient. A Hummer EV is a classic example. It is a simply massive vehicle weighing very nearly five tonnes. Its battery alone weighs about the same as a Tesla Model Y. And in America, it's classed as a light goods vehicle. The battery capacity of a basic Model Y is about 60 kilowatt hours. The Hummer is 212, over three and a half times bigger. While they advertise over 300 mile of range, with that much weight and a not too impressive aer aerodynamic profile, it is a seriously inefficient EV. However, if you needed to tow your half a million dollar yacht, which burns 20 gallons of petrol an hour, or a really heavy Airstream caravan, the cost of filling and running a Hummer is probably not your top priority. Most of us do worry about the cost of motoring. And while we can adjust our driving style to make the range longer and the consumption less, we can do nothing to affect the car's design and construction efficiency. Let's go back to range. Not all cars display anything more than a simple bar graph or digital figures with the estimated range showing and often also the estimated state of charge remaining when you get to your chosen destination, if you're using sat-nav. By the way, I always use sat-nav, even if I know exactly how to get there, even going home, for two reasons. First, it will usually display the estimated state of charge when you arrive, which helps with planning your next charging session. And second, almost all sat-nav has active or live traffic, so it can divert you round heavy congestion before you come to a grinding halt. The displayed range will change throughout the trip. When you get in, it might suggest you can drive, let's say, 200 miles, but once you get going, that will change. Maybe down to 150, maybe up to 250. And this is because before you set off, the car has no idea how you're going to drive. Once you start driving, it does know, and it adjusts the estimated range accordingly. Your driving style dramatically affects your range and consumption, and to a much lesser degree, your overall efficiency. Racing away from traffic lights with full acceleration and screeching to a halt at the next set will reduce your range and increase your consumption. Driving like Miss Daisy will reverse that. So when you first get your EV, or when you see this video, read what the car expects the range to be before you set off, and check when you get there what your car actually did. Take the starting figure suggested, say 200 mile estimated, deduct what you actually cover using the trip meter say 150 miles and see if you have 50 mile expected range left not just once do this often to build up a picture 
Now if the figures are always the same, the estimated range always matches the actual range covered, then you're probably driving quite efficiently and you can rely on the estimated range figure when planning your next journey. If the figures are wildly different, then your driving style has surprised the car and almost certainly not in a good way. But that's your choice. You drive how you like, it's a free world. But don't drive like a Formula One world champion like Lewis Hamilton and then complain your car doesn't get very far before it needs charging. Now consumption is almost a mirror image of range. It shows you how much electricity your driving is consuming in real time, either as watt hours per mile or miles per kilowatt hour. And it's usually visible all the time you're driving. Now I'm old school, I was always brought up with miles per gallon and I still prefer miles per kilowatt hour today. If your display shows watt hours per mile, simply divide 1000 by the number of watt hours, say 1000 divided by 323, that'll give you 3.09 miles per kilowatt hour. Just a straight calculation. On a recent trip, I went through a long, long stretch of roadworks with average speed cameras and 50 mile an hour signs everywhere. By the end of the roadworks, my watt hours per mile reading averaged over the last 15 miles, normally hovering around the 340 figure, had dropped to 189. Uh, there's a video on this subject due out soon. If the roadworks had continued for the whole trip, I would have achieved uh, 1,000 divided by 189 is 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour, making my 80 kilowatt battery capable of 423 miles. At that rate, I could get from Preston to Land's End on a single charge. The more you drive like Miss Daisy, the less electricity you will use, meaning you will charge less often and each trip will cost you less. The lower your consumption, the better. Now again, sometimes there'll be a need for speed and other times it's nice just to cruise along enjoying the scenery. Whatever you choose, it will reflect in the consumption of electricity. Efficiency includes a mix of range and consumption, but actually goes very much deeper into the actual design and build of the car. While you can drive better to alter your consumption and range, there is nothing you can do with the way your car is built and designed. If it is built inefficiently, it will always be more inefficient than another car. The only time you can alter this is when you choose your car. If efficiency and cost of running are not important to you, just go ahead, choose whatever you want. But for most of us, it is actually important. So how does a design and build affect efficiency? Well, first the easy ways. If a designer has to use a legacy body that is already in production, then he or she has no choice in how cleanly the car cuts through the air. But if he or she can start with a clean sheet of paper, it can be designed specifically to be incredibly efficient. This is the drag coefficient. The lower, the better. BMW iX60 is 0.26, and Audi e-tron 0.28, Toyota BZ4 0.29, while a Tesla Model S is 0.20. That's between 20 and 30% more efficient, purely by design. All else being equal, it will use less electricity, but of course all else is not equal. I'll complete an analysis of these factors covering all currently available EVs for sale in a separate video, produce a table of the data. If you like this video, by the way, please subscribe so you don't miss it and hit the like button. Now, a heavy car will use more energy getting up to speed than a light car, so obvious. An MG4 weighs in at 1,655 kilos, while a BMW iX1 weighs 2,085, about 25% heavier. An Audi e-tron Quattro weighs in at 2,490, while a Tesla Model S, 1,961. It's over half a tonne lighter. A car with two very powerful motors will capture more regeneration energy when slowing down than a car with two smaller motors. A car with a really efficient battery management system and powerful heating and cooling can use more power more efficiently. Efficiency is mostly decided for you before you buy the car. You cannot change it. You can overcome some of the inefficiencies with your driving style. Uh, driving slower dramatically reduces drag. But that applies to all cars and the core values are always there. Now the miles per kilowatt hour figure is the first indication of efficiency, but the final equation is really incredibly complex. 
The most efficient EV on sale today is recognised as the Tesla Model Y, followed extremely closely by the Model S, both achieving well over four miles per kilowatt hour. The Hyundai Ioniq 6, incredibly close behind that, then the Lucid Air, and followed by the MG4, just a touch under four miles. Quite a few cars appear at around about three miles per kilowatt hour. Ford Mach-E, VW ID4, BMW iX40, Nissan Leaf, Polestar. And then bringing up the rear are the real heavyweights. Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron, e struggling to get two and a half miles. Rivian hovering around the two miles. And the Hummer EV brings up the rear a very distant one and a half miles per kilowatt hour. When choosing your next or your new EV, have a think about efficiency. No surprise that the purpose designed and built EVs are way above legacy cars using converted petrol or diesel model body shells, which are neither very aerodynamic nor lightweight. Some top models can use half the electricity than the others. And the top ones are by no means all the most expensive. The MG4 deserves a special mention. Look out for the full EV efficiency summary due out in a few weeks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'm Dave.